Hello, my wonderful viewers. Welcome to my platform. This is Linda's TV show. If it is your first time of coming across this channel and you like what you see after watching, please subscribe, put on your notification bell, set it to all notifications. In that way, you'll be able to get notified each time I upload a new video, even those without notification. Here we react to all forms of videos, international and local. Every Saturday by 2 p.m. we have our interaction section. You are free to call in to air your opinion about the happenings in our society. Invite your friends, share my videos with your families and colleagues. Do not keep this information to yourself. Myself, I will be sitting down here to watch this video together with you from the beginning to the end. Then we'll go to the comment section and leave our comment, our opinion about the video we we'll watch constructively as we watch this video, my people. You, this is the second time you want to be president of Nigeria and you wanted the ticket of your party. The question is, what has changed? Why this time around? Well, the first time in 2018, the issues have remained the same till this moment of insecurity, of the economy, of the general decay in infrastructure, and several and varying challenges uh, afflicting our nation. So they are the same? Virtually the same, uh, and, 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 uh, and the fault lines have been uh, sharply, sharply uh, widened. So, and you are the man and that the unity of this it. country is at stake. And you are the man that you think you can fix that, those problems? I believe I can. Because you are talking about strength, you are talking about mobility. Uh, beyond mobility and strength and being youthful uh, in Luke and all that, I mean, don't you think that this nation deserves more than all that? This nation deserves more than all that. I have been talking about competencies. I've been talking about someone with the, with the requisite experience of operating a federal governance system in Nigeria and, and someone who has the knowledge and experience of the complexities, uh, complexities of Nigeria state. And I believe that I possess those, uh, those, those, those qualities. But, I mean, the, the big question now is where you come from. There are some of your friends that have challenged um, the, the sensibility of wanting the president, uh, presidential candidate of the party to come from the north. And, uh, for example, the governors of the south-south, they met yesterday, and they said the south-south is the backbone of the PDP, and they want the, gov uh, the, the ticket to go to the, to the south. The southwest leaders have also met today in the battle. And he said the slot should come, I mean, it should go to the, to the south. The government of the south last year in Lagos State all decided unanimously that the slot of the president should go to the south. What is your view on that? My view is that um, um, the president of Nigeria should be such a person that should be a Nigerian president, not a regional president. The president of Nigeria should uh, come from wherever, provided he has the capacity and the competence to fix Nigeria of the moment. The Nigeria of 1998 is different from Nigeria of 2022-2023. And as I said before, APC in 2015, deliberately out of strategy, sought out President Muhammad Buhari from Kazan State. Meanwhile, the last president of Nigeria from northern part of Nigeria was Malam Umar Musayradu from the same Kazan State who died in 2010, barely five years after APC, out of strategic thinking, went to Kazakhstan State and sought out President Muhammad Buhari before because they believe that they can win election with him. It is now that APC is talking about zoning. When they were looking for presidency and power, they didn't talk about zoning. They went for someone that they believe can check the boxes of that moment, who can deliver uh, elections to them. So I am appealing to my party that we should be talking about how to win the election in, uh, by, by the PDP, not necessarily zoning or where the president is coming from. So, I mean, Chief Bode, George, earlier on the program said, you seem to have put the cat before the horse. That look, you need to look at the issue of equity and fairness before thinking about the election. Why is winning the election more paramount for you? If you talk about winning, if you talk about fairness and equity in PDP. PDP 
was in government for 16 years. Of those 16 years, close to 12 years, uh, was, it was, it was, the presidency was in the South. President Obasanjo to President Ole Shogunda to President um, Jonathan. President Moriadu had only two, about two to three years. So in PDP, if you are talking about equity and fairness, the presidency, if you bust zone, should come to the North. If you talk about the return of democracy in the Fourth Republic, by the time President Muhammadu Buhari would have finished his second term, would have had democracy for 24 years. Out of those, 10 years to 14 years were presidency from the South, 10 from the North. So why do you place equity and fairness? So but why, why do you want to make it back to back? North, North, back to back. Why not north and go to the south and go back to the north? No, no, no. I, what, what, what you're talking, doesn't, what, what, doesn't that look lopsided? What, what, no, well, it's not, not, if it's a north, not, not necessarily. Not, not immediately not after necessarily. north. Well, I, I, I've been talking about, I'm making the point that we want to win election. We must think of how to win an election. And demography is key in winning an election. And as I said, APC, out of strategic thinking, went to Katina, where the last president from the north came from because they were planning to win the election. So what is fundamental for PDP as at today is to win. Then after winning, then we can, we can continue to, 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 to do the delicate balancing of partiality. You think you can win the election when, it come, when the chiefs are down? Convincingly. You can defeat this APC, no matter who they bring forward? Roundly. I have that conviction. How do you speak to your brother, Atiku Abubakar? He is my uncle. Not my brother. I have a lot of respect for him. Have you, I mean, what have you agreed with Bukala Saraki and Governor Mohammed? We are, it's work in progress. We are talking to ourselves. And we shall approach Atiku Abakar himself and other aspirants in the PDP I, to see how best we can all come together and stabilize our party and reduce the tension in our party and the polity and, and see how best we can, we, can, we can, if possible, work a consensus. It has worked for us. And that was how we brought, for the first time, Yochi Ayu, Dr. Yochi Ayu, to be chairman of the PDP. So it's not new to PDP, especially in recent times. What would you be telling Atiku Abubakar? How do you mean? Are you able to tell him to his face that he should step down for you? Not yet. But are you able to tell him, as your uncle? I said, not yet. No, I, I'm asking if you will be able to confront him face to face, a politician we'll to a politician. The we'll, we'll put the arguments across. We put the arguments across. You think you're a better candidate than himself? I'm not saying that I'm better. But I, all I know is that I possess the qualities, particularly when you are talking about Nigeria of today, that can deliver the votes for PDP. So the, the people will ask you the question. I mean, uh, let's say that uh, charity begins at home. If you want to be Nigeria's president, what have you done to the people of Sokoto State? What legacy would you say you have left? This is going to be your fifth or sixth year in being a governor and the M of Affairs in Sokoto State. Well, well, if you know Sokoto of 2015 and you go to Sokoto today, you will see the difference in terms of infrastructural transformation, in terms of policies that were put in place that have made Sokoto to be number one by the assessment of the World Bank uh, 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 processed and warehoused by the Minister of Finance in SIFTAS, transparency and accountability. Sokoto is now second uh, in best in terms of ease of doing business. And we have done a lot in the educational sector. We have reduced significantly the number of out of school children. We have reduced the, 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 the negative, ne negative, uh, negative uh, health indices of the state, uh, maternal mortality in the state. We have, we have built hostels. We are currently carrying out a number of projects in healthcare, in education, in water. And, 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 and general uh, uh, rural transformation of the state. The facts are there. It is very clear that Sokoto, uh, under my watch, has improved tremendously. Mm. So you, you can boldly say that anybody who wants to check you, to check you out in Sokoto, Sokoto State. Very well, straight up. And you take that template to the national level. Very well. I mean, today is not, it's not I mean, we don't have all the time because I still have a lot of questions. I guess we'll have, bring you and analyze what you have done in Sokoto State and whether or not that can measure up to you being able to govern uh, Nigeria as a whole. But let me ask you one or two questions on, uh, on your fitness for the candidacy of your party uh, at the presidential level. Um, 
there are those who accuse you of not running a balanced committee when you were the House of Reps. Before I answer that, I read online a medium saying that I said that uh, South South cannot produce the president of Nigeria. Did you say that? I didn't say that. What did you say exactly? Rather, in 2011, I supported a presidential candidate of South South Extraction, good luck, Ebele Jonathan, to win the presidency of Nigeria. And I have many friends in, in, in South South who are competent, who are qualified to be president of Nigeria. I, I didn't say that. I, I, what I said has nothing to do with that. I didn't say that. So back to the question of uh, balancing committees in the House of Reps. We ran a very transparent, all-inclusive House of Representatives of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in the 7th House of Reps. The, the, the facts are there. When you talk about balancing, balance, uh, balancing the committees, for the first time, Committee on Upstream was in the Southwest. Committee on Health and Appropriation were in the South-South. Committees on Works, Aviation, Foreign Affairs were in Southeast. Committee on Water Resources was in, 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 in the North Central. Committee on Agriculture, Police were, were, were in, in Northeast. Committee on Education, Defense were in the, the Northwest. Even the new committee we created on Diaspora was in the Southwest, and we gave it to Abike Dabri. And it was from there that she cut her teeth and became a very good ambassador of the House of Reps and of that committee for, to, to, for her to be where she is today. You know what I mean? Those who have taken the, 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 the lesson from there, that you were somewhat working against your party when you were the speaker of the PDP. I, you I, support. I, I, was, I was speaker of the Republic of Nigeria. But you, you were sponsored by your party, the of PDP. Of course, I believe but so. But those who are, I mean, accused you that you were working against your party. Okay, tell, me, tell, you tell, me, any of the, tell me any of the bills of President Woodlock Jonathan that failed in the House of Reps. One bill. But politically, you are aligned with other parties. That's what they were saying. Politically, I was available to engage and have a consensus and chat way forward for, for Nigeria. Because it's the House of Reps is not a PDP house. It's House of Representatives of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You are very firm and very uh, strong on your stance of uh, the openness of the, the zoning. That you don't want your party to box itself. What is the danger if your party go against your stance? Well, it's a trial. I am maintaining my position. I, I, I may not say there's any danger, but what I'm saying is that I, as a politician, and from the indices, my party stands to have a better opportunity as at today. Because time is running out of my party to make a formal uh, position on zoning, especially when forms are being picked and, 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 and almost issues are being joined on, 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 on the presidency of this country. So it, it, it may be a bit, a bit too, too tight. Are you telling your party tonight that Amino Tambua is a man? Very well. And not only my party, but Nigerians. I have two quick questions for you, and I like. I just have about sixty seconds to close the program. The, the first being that the uh, the APC had said there are plans by the PDP to destabilize this country, and the DSS had also come out that in some part of the country in the north there are plans by leaders of the of of the opposition and some very uh, influential leaders to destabilize this on this country. How do you react to it? I'm not aware of that. I don't know the source of their information. It's up to them to justify what they have said or to establish their case against those individuals. On a final note, is on the issue of security. Your state is embattled by this issue of insecurity. What, would you, uh, what solution comes to mind for you that can permanently fix the issue of banditry and insecurity in Nigeria? First, addressing those issues that gave rise to it, issues of education, Educating the, the, the public, I mean, I mean, getting the young, the youth educated, employed, and of course, a deployment of more personnel and technology. Should you be president today, Governor Tambua? How long will it take you to fix the insecurity problems? I can't say how long. Shown. But how easy is it to fix it? I have an idea of what to do. The, we must take it to the community level. We must go and address the issue of state police and get security closer to the people. So you will go to the National Assembly for a bill on state, state police? Is that what it, you will do? If it means me, I mean, Wazir Tambol, as president of Nigeria, taking the bill personally to the president of the Senate and the Speaker of the House of Reps, I'll do so. Because I believe it's one of the interventions that we need as a matter of urgency 
to nip the issues of security challenges in the board. Governor Aminu Tambua, Executive Governor of Sokoto, said many thanks indeed for coming tonight. And I wish you the very my wonderful viewers for watching this video together with me from the beginning to the end like i said before if you like what you see here if you like what i do in this platform as you have finished watching this video please hit that red button that says subscribe and put on your notification bell to all notifications in that way you'll be able to know when i upload a new video share my videos leave your comments in the comment section constructively until I meet your way again in my next video, I still remain your Linda's TV show. Bye-bye.